On the track is a web TV show about cryptozoology, natural history, green issues, and whatever else the team feel like making up as they go along. Enjoy. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the new year 2022, and I have taken control of the On Track Studio because I want to tell you all about the plans I have for this coming new year. First of all, On The Track is going to change its name to Archie's On The Track. Second of all, it's going to go to pay by pay per view and you're all going to have to send me dog biscuits and cheese in order to see any episodes at all from now on. Thirdly, Father is being banished because he's a silly old man. Fourth, the only member of the team apart from me who's going to be staying is going to be Computer Boy because we need Computer Boy to do things. So well done, Computer Boy. Don't call me Computer Boy. I think that's what I call a very predictable way to start the new year here at On The Track. I really like the old credits. Good afternoon ladies and gentlemen and a very happy new year to you. Yes, it is 2022 and at the moment while I'm trying to record the New Year's Day message to the Commonwealth and believe me this is a story in itself because it's taken me days to do something which should have taken me about 20 minutes but I'm here now. I've got Archie with me. I've got the lovely Lilith with me over there and I've even got Louie with me on the iPad. Yo, what's up? It's your boy Louie aka Computer Boy here with my main man Jay Swizzy wishing you a happy new year. What's What on earth did that mean? I have absolutely no idea what the boy was saying but I'm very fond of him and I'm not going to insult the whole bastion of the younger generation whom I suspect mostly speak like that and so I'm not going to insult them all by saying I haven't a bloody clue what you just said but welcome to a new show welcome to a new year and as I expect you know my name's John Downs I'm the director of an outfit called the Centre for Fortune Zoology and every Saturday afternoon I bring you half an hour of Peculiar news, strange animal stories, hard science, weird shit, and a sprinkling of Surrey alchemy, as my old mate Doc Shields used to call it. Because the world is a very peculiar place, and I think that if you try to see it purely in terms of three dimensions and stuff that we can make sense of, then you're making a great mistake because the world is far more peculiar than that and you know what I really enjoy talking about this every Saturday afternoon I want to say one thing before we start on I have been in positions in my life and a bit like it at the moment that I follow various things various web comics various news websites various music websites on a weekly basis and it always annoys me that these websites close down for Christmas because I think that Christmas and New Year is a very very sad time for a lot of people and I think it is important that the websites and the YouTube shows and everything else that they watch and read throughout the year 
do what they do at Christmas and New Year as well, which is why I'm sitting here wearing an Angry Brigade t-shirt, cuddling the dog, cuddling the cat, and listening to Louis talk in his peculiar youngster's patois. Because this is the New Year's Day show. Enjoy. I'm very tempted to have a little placard at the beginning of each segment saying what's in it, but that's only because this next segment is set in Finland and I've been listening to Brian Eno's recording from the late 1970s of Seven Deadly Finns. And I just think I thought that would be an amusing way of starting this, but it probably wouldn't. So, on with the story. This picture was sent to me by Louis on, I believe, it was Christmas Eve. And I thought it was absolutely fantastic. The idea that people in Finland are so worried about the number of car strikes on deer that they have started to paint the antlers of their semi-domesticated reindeer in luminous paint so that car drivers are likely to be pre-warned as they come tootling around the corner that there is a deer sitting in the middle of the road at night. I think that's a brilliant idea and I looked it up and yes it is happening, it's definitely happening. But there is one wonderfully silly Fortean twist to it all. The picture that started my investigation into all this is a fake. The artwork was posted by Instagram user Atta Vazanjengenkatro, who identifies as a visual designer. It was posted back in February 2020 and was indeed inspired by Finnish Initiative. The post description reads, This is 3D, this is not real. It's based on a real story I saw from at Berenhazi that in Finland they paint reindeer's antlers to shine at night so they don't get hit by cars. As reported by the BBC, the Finnish Reindeer Herders Association started testing this method in 2014 in Finnish Lapland to prevent traffic accidents. The story features an authentic photograph of the initiative with a reindeer whose antlers are coated with reflective paint. Will this be carrying on? Will this be um, taken further? Will this even spread to other parts of Finland, not alo- let alone Scandinavia? And could it be used even in East Sussex, where Louis lives, where apparently loads of people are having fatal interactions between their cars and roe deer? Will it ever spread out of Finnish Lapland? Well, I think that's in the lap of the gods. I told Mr. John that that was not an effective piece of funny. Because nobody was going to get it, and I bet that I'm right. This year marks a couple of very important anniversaries, both for me and for the Centre for Fortune Zoology. Firstly, my mother would have been a hundred years old in April this year. And also in April this year, the Centre for Fortune Zoology marks its 30th birthday. I really, truly have no idea where the time has gone, because if you'd told me 30 years ago I'd be sitting here an elderly widow with a grey beard and a wheelchair and a little black cap. Well, I'd probably believe the little black cap, but I wouldn't believe the rest. And I truly would not have believed that the Centre for Fortune Zoology, which I always thought was a really good idea, but at least in its early days, everybody I spoke to thought I was an idiot for trying. I never thought the Centre for Fortune Zoology would be going strong as strong as it is 30 years later and this is where you guys come in and I said this at the beginning that I don't do New Year's resolutions anymore but there is something I would very much like to ask you the viewers 
to do for us. There are a lot of things needing to be done at the CFZ. Graham, Richard and I are getting older and Graham and I are getting more decrepit and there are lots and lots and lots of things which need to be done in order to continue with our programme of research and our programme of publication and our programme of videos and everything else that we do. And I would be immensely pleased if we could have some more volunteers to come and help us. If you're in Britain and you fancy coming down here for a few days to help with some of the dull stuff that needs to be done around the place, I'd be very grateful. However, if you're not in Britain and you have a local mystery that you would like to do a five minute segment on so we can fit in more stuff from CFZ members around the world that's something I really want to do as well and I need researchers I need people to help with administration I need people who are better at using the more technical video editing software than I am I need people who can work putting together some of the books that we have such a backlog now that I really want to do and now I'm working on this by myself I cannot do in the space of time I have up available to me so I need people to help me with the books I've got all sorts of things that the Centre for Fortune Zoology needs doing and please if you make no other resolutions this year please drop me an email because I'm sure we'll be able to find something for you. Because as the CFZ family expands, more and more things need to be done. And I'm getting older and I can't do them. So please get in touch. Well, I know that I make quite a lot of jokes about it, quite often involving my coffee mug, which is behind me. But to my mind, the CFZ truly is a family. We are a brotherhood and sisterhood of people all over the world in at least four continents who are working together for the same aims, who believe in roughly the same ideology and want to achieve the same things. Over the years we have managed to achieve some extraordinary things particularly because of the wonderful help that my late wife Karina gave us. And I don't want to do what Gerald Dorrell, who's my greatest hero, did and write to my first wife out of the story. She did some pretty fantastic work with me back in the old days to help me set the CF set up in the first place. And I truly don't want her contribution to the Centre for Fortune Zoology back in the mid-1990s to be forgotten because we wouldn't be here doing what we do now without her. Yes, it's a family and like all families, people come and people go and we have had two people in the CFZ extended family leave us this Christmas my old friend Jenny Gribble, who many, many years ago, somewhere 40 years ago, taught me how to do most of the bits of field work that I actually know how to do, and taught me the rudiments of ornithology. She died just before Christmas. My heart and feelings and good vibes go out to her son Ellis to whom I was always Uncle John when he was a little boy and I wrote to him recently and said if he ever needed an Uncle John again he knows where I am. Also died just before Christmas was the husband of Art, the husband of my old friend Karen Gensheimer and she's somebody I'm very very fond of and I have talked to her a couple of times 
since her husband died and again offered anything I can do to help because, and I don't want to keep banging on about it, I do know what it is like when your partner, helpmate, other half, all these silly expressions, but they're all completely true. I know what happens when your wife dies. But we have had two additions to the CFZ extended family. First of all, Miss Maxine's grandson, Bodie, was born in Scotland a few days before Christmas and those of you who went to the weird weekends about 10 years ago or so will remember that there was a bright charming and pretty girl called Jessica Little Jess as we called her and she was running around the place being basically my assistant she was fantastic and I don't know how I would have done the weird weekends at that time without her and Jess Jessica little Jess whatever you want to call her had a baby boy called Alfie at four o'clock at about two o'clock in the morning on Christmas morning and so the universe taketh away but the universe also giveth and that is one of the most beautiful things about being at the centre of a human hub like the Centre for Fortune Zoology. It is truly a family and it is a truly dynamic human grouping of people who interact with each other in ways that I would never have expected. So please boys, boys and girls in the 100th anniversary of my mother's death, I want to do a lot of stuff to make the CFZ into a solid organisation which will go on after my, after my demise. And as it was my mother who first taught me to, as she said, look beyond that next curve in the road, that next bend in the road, I've been doing that ever since she told me that when I was about six in Hong Kong. And so I want to make her proud. So mum, whatever we do this year to make the CFZ more solid, more functional and an even bigger and better family, it's for you. If you want to support us and help us make more content like these, Please press like, subscribe, follow our Facebook page and check out our Patreon. And as the ghost of Joe Strummer, who is an ever more regular visitor to my little studio, wants me to remind you, always press the notification bell. Otherwise you won't be told when there's a new show to watch. And that would be an awful pity, wouldn't it? And so we are here at the end of another episode. I hope you enjoyed it. I would like to explain a couple of things. The noise that you hear in the background is a problem with the fish tank filter. But hopefully we can get it sorted out before we start recording the first proper episode of 22, 2022. Why? You ask, haven't we followed up on the story of the Bowling Bigfoot that we started before Christmas? And the answer is that, quite understandably, we're going to have less people watching the Christmas and New Year's Day episodes because people have different stuff to do. They have different priorities at Christmas tide. And that's quite okay. It's quite understandable and I have no problem with it. But I thought it would be better to continue with the remarkable story of what happened to us all up at Bolam Lake. I thought it would be better to continue with that when the festive season... See guys, I can call it the festive season without adding what is euphemistically known as when the festive season is over and we've all returned to what passes for normality here at the Centre for Fortune Zoology. So watch out for it, we'll probably be starting again and continuing the story in the next episode. 
all depending on fish tanks and all the other things in this ever-changing multiverse. So, I apologise that this is a show that's been mostly me talking. I hope you don't get too bored by it. But it was stuff that I wanted to say and that I thought and still think is important. So, thank you for listening to me. I want to say a big thank you to Louis, dear boy, who helped me out with some technical problems on this show and helped me get it together as well as making a brief cameo appearance at the beginning of the show. So thank you to Louis, thank you to Hennis and me and the gang, including Louis and Hennis, will be back to see you next Saturday because every Saturday afternoon it's CFZ on the track time. So if you're going to be there and they are going to be there, who are they? I don't know, we're going to find out. And I'm going to be there then. I'll be seeing you.